hi you guys thank you so much for coming back to my channel if you are a returning subscriber i see you and thank you so much for watching if you are watching for the first time i appreciate you too i hope everyone stays and continues to watch all right so today we're talking about money how much i got paid at my first esl job without wasting any more time let's just get right into it For those that are new here, I started teaching in 2018. I teach in China. I am another ESL teacher and yeah, I've been enjoying the ride so far. Right, so my first job, I was teaching in a high school. I was teaching grade 10 and grade 11. Grade 10, I taught literature and then grade 11, I taught IBDP, which is just another curriculum, international curriculum. I, and my duties were to just teach, make lesson plans, make question papers for the exams, grade, and pretty much that was it. And then sometimes we were encouraged to attend events, but we're not really forced or expected to. So we attended events if we felt like we wanted to. Um, I worked in an international division, but the school was a public school. So we had like two separate schools. Um, which was okay. Right, um, so how many students did I have? I had 30 students in grade 10 and then I had 25 students in grade 11, which was also not a lot of students. Okay. And My working hours, I worked from Monday um, to Friday from 8 to 5, if I'm not mistaken. And then sometimes you work on a Saturday, depending on the national holidays here. It's pretty normal. Um, before I get into the figures, I want to say that this amount of money may not be a lot of money for a lot of people. I did not grow up with money. Uh, I was not raised by rich parents. I was raised by a single mom. So for me, this was quite a lot of money. And in South Africa, I was earning close to the amount but living here made a very big difference, but I'm going to get into that when I start talking figures. Um, my contract, so the benefits were, I got paid during the holidays. So in January, we have winter holidays, which is roughly four weeks. So I got paid for that. Um, and then in week, I got paid for the summer holidays as well, which was July and August. Is it June or July? July and August, actually. Yeah, so I got paid for July and August, and then I got paid for January, which is not always the case. That came in handy. So it meant that I didn't really have to worry about money much. And it included me being reimbursed for my plane ticket at the end of the contract. And then there was um housing there was a housing allowance as well there was also this food money like which was not a lot of money but it, what it meant was that we if you ate out and then you had to make up this amount of money and then you'd have to show the school this the slips or the bill and then they reimburse you as well so those are my benefits there, were, there was also health insurance and yeah i think that's pretty much all of right. it so let's get into what you are here for the amount of money that i really got paid at my first in esl job right so i got paid fifteen thousand five hundred rmb before tax and then i got three thousand rmb for housing and then i got roughly 500 rmb for food which i had to provide um an invoice is, is, is it an invoice? A FAPR, we call it a FAPR. I'm not sure if it's an invoice, but we, you just had to get the exact amount of money from your slips, your, your outings, and then you, you gave it to the school, like I said before. All right, so 15,500 RMB, which is roughly, at that time, it was roughly 30 plus um, thousand rands. It was not a lot of money, but I was able to pay back the money I borrowed to come here. I was able to send some money home to my family and I was able to still continue paying my debit orders back home. I still have debit orders in South Africa. 
yeah so it was not a lot of money but i lived on it i was i was living a very comfortable life and in my first year i was not able to travel i just stayed in shanghai but i did go home after one year um the rent money it was not enough um shanghai is quite expensive where rent is concerned so i had to i had to live in a shared apartment which was okay um at the time so it did help so i didn't if if i wanted to live alone i would have had to add a little bit more money for me to live comfortably alone but i didn't do that i just lived with other people which worked out just fine um the outings yes i did go out with my friends every now and then i did buy new clothes i did buy did i buy new things gadgets no i didn't buy new gadgets during my first year i just got glasses which are quite cheap cheap here um yeah that's pretty much it so let's make this comparison as well so in south africa i was a teacher as well i taught in a government school and i think at that time i got paid 22,000 rands for tax which was not so bad but um it was not enough for me anymore when i decided to leave so moving here and getting paid what i was getting paid you can tell that it was not much of a difference it didn't make much of a difference but it truly did make a huge difference in my financial life and i'm going to talk about that in my next video please do stay tuned if you've enjoyed this video thank you so much for staying this long please like comment and subscribe and do not forget to share with your friends i hope this helps um, with your decisions to move here and maybe helps manage your expectations thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate you so 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 much bye you guys